Okay, we're recording. So on um, Tuesday, we started with careers. Um, lots of you responded to the discussion board with um, the game warden. Some of you did wildlife biologist, um, a couple others. No one was really interested in many forestry careers, so mainly mainly wildlife and game warden. So, But thank you for those discussion board posts. Um, today, we're going to talk about some tools uh, that many of those careers use to either um, cruise timber, measure trees, um, collect soil samples, some some things like that. I have a few of them with me here. I don't have all of them, but if you've got your notes, you can go ahead and open up your notes with me. Um, 5.04 is where we're at, and the notes should look something, they're small, they should look something like that, okay? Not a whole lot highlighted, um, just a few of the tools. There's only about seven plus Three, there's only 10 listed. Okay, so those are those are the 10 we're going to talk about today. Some of you, some of you may recognize some of these. Maybe some of this is something you've never seen. So environmental science tools. All right. First one is going to be a bush axe. A bush axe. Okay, so if you've ever used this tool, um, you probably used it to um clear out stuff okay so a lot of people use this tool as well as foresters to clear out areas that are overgrown so like um if you are in the woods and you're trying to clear a path um, or clean out some undergrowth undergrowth being all the stuff that grows on the bottom of the um the forest floor um you can use this to, to chop okay it's used like in a chopping motion to cut bushes and just undergrowth in no really formal way. You're just trying to clear it out. So that's that's how that's used. That's a, that's a bush axe. Used to axe bushes, I guess. A chainsaw file. All right, who would use a chainsaw? What one of our careers would use a chainsaw? More than likely someone in the forestry, um, in a forestry career, uh, cutting down trees, um, clearing out um, forested land or a wooded lot. Uh, chainsaw file is important because if you're on the job and your chainsaw um, is dull, then your trees aren't going to cut well and that makes your job difficult. So a chainsaw file is used to sharpen a chainsaw blade. Most of you, if you have parents who use a chainsaw at home, most people don't sharpen their own chainsaw blades because they just take them to the um, to the maintenance shop and have someone else sharpen their um, chain for them or they just buy a new one. But when you're on site, if you're in the forestry industry and you're on site, you want to be able to do that right there um, yourself. So a half hatchet. So half hatchet is used for cutting and fitting firewood. So um, this is not a full size axe, even though it's hard to tell on the screen. It's a lot smaller, probably the length of like from your elbow to your um, fingertips. So the purpose for this is to cut firewood, like once you've got it in log size, um, more, a more manageable size log, you can cut and split um, smaller pieces of firewood. So firewood, of course, is a um, product from the forest, a good from the wood. All right, increment bore. So I have this tool. Well, I don't have this tool. I have an example of what this tool creates. Okay, so an increment bore um, is used to check the growth rate of trees. Let me get my piece of a tree. All right, so you guys know how to tell how old a tree is, right? Maybe you do. If not, uh, let's review that really quickly. So that's something you probably should have learned a little while ago in your science classes. But um, this is the cross section of a tree. OK, if you're working in the wedding industry, we call it a tree cookie because uh, you can put decorations on it on your table. Really popular. So um, this is what a tree that was cut down the inside of it looks like. Um, and inside there are rings. OK. So I don't know if you can see on camera, um, but there are rings, okay? Hopefully you've seen the inside of a tree before. And those rings represent, for every ring there is, that's one year of growth, all right? So the number of rings there are tells you how old the tree is, okay? Pine trees grow really fast and have large rings. If this was an oak tree, it grows really slow and the rings would be much smaller. So to tell how old the tree is without cutting down the tree, because you might want to check 
to see how old it is, but you don't want to cut down the tree because then the tree stops living. And there was no point in knowing how old it was because it won't keep growing. So to do that, they use what we call an increment bore. Okay. Um, and this increment bore, I don't have one, but is inserted into the side of the tree. Okay. And then it's twisted to bore a hole and pull out like a plug of the tree like this. So they would, they would, bore into the side of the tree and then pull out a plug that looks like this um by doing this the tree can keep growing the tree's not really harmed it'll grow back that wood um and it won't inhibit its growth the tree can keep living but on that um plug of the tree this is just like a plastic one plastic example it's not it's not real but it's used to learn about it um there will be rings okay these of course are drawn in so to give you a better example of it, um, but you'll, you'll be able to count those rings without having to cut down the tree. Okay, so it's increment bore, checking the growth rate, growth rate of trees. Now, if you notice, some of these rings are bigger than others. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I mean, Ms. Whitley, that means that the tree grew more in those years than in others. And you're exactly right. So some years, um, there's more rain. Some years, there's more nutrients in the soil. Some years, there's natural disasters and the tree doesn't grow as much because it's stressed. All right. And that is exactly what those rings on that tree can tell you is um, they can be indicators of what's going on in nature. Okay. Another reason to check the growth rings on trees. So that's that. A planting bar. All right. You guys remember when we were talking about forestry and um, we talked about how if you're ready to harvest trees, you can do a clear cut and clear cutting is when you go and you cl like clear out all the trees on a lot or selection cutting, which is when you go in and select. Well, when you, after you harvest trees, you know, you always want to plant trees back. So we don't want, we don't cut trees down without planting trees back. And when you replant, you got to go and someone has to set out all those tree seedlings, more, more than likely the forestry technician. But they use a, tr a planting bar to do that. So you can see they'll put their, they'll step on this piece right here um, and kind of wiggle it back and forth, make a small hole, drop the tree right in, um, and then kind of put the dirt back and move on. So this planting bar helps them do that really, really quickly for, um, especially if you're working over a lot of acres of land. All right, a soil auger. So a soil auger bores into the soil to get samples. So this will be for like a soil scientist who's gaining, um, who's trying to obtain a soil sample for testing to, to classify the soil, to, to test the nutrients in the soil, something like that. Um, and I actually have one. So this is um, one type of soil auger or soil tube is another way to call it. Okay. So here are the handles. All right, and it's inserted in the soil here. So you step on this part, okay? So my foot would push this down into the soil, all right? And when it's inserted into the soil, the ground would push this piece up, all right? And then when I'm ready to take it out, I take it out, and there would be a plug of soil in here, all right? This will be full of soil, and then I would have a bucket that I would push it out. Okay, and it would fall right out and I would have a soil sample. The one you see on the screen here um, is one that you twist in. So it's a twisting motion that you would do just like this. Okay, and then you pull it out um, and it kind of does the same thing. Um, this one just works a little differently, but both obtain a soil sample. So that's that. Soil auger. Okay, a tree diameter tape. Now, if you remember from careers, who is our person that measures trees? Somebody comment. Who measures trees? Nobody remembers who measures trees? Anybody in the chat? I'll give you another second to look back at your notes. Okay, well, hopefully you guys just uh, have so many notes that you can't that you can't cipher through them all. A timber cruiser. All right, so a timber cruiser measures um, tree volume. 
tree volume tells you how much your trees are worth because it tells you how much um, how much wood you actually have that you can harvest and make money off of. All right, so a timber cruiser is the person who's going to come out and measure all your trees and tell you how much. Um, one tool that they used to do that is a tree diameter tape. Okay, um, this tree diameter tape, this particular one, I have two. Here's one. This one's cool because it has a clip. And so if you're walking through the forest, you can clip it on your belt loop. And then, you know, it's just very easy access. So that's kind of what it's designed for. Um, this one's kind of cool because it's like leather and it's got, this one looks more like the one on the screen. Um, and it kind of winds. So you could, and it has a hook. So this one has a hook that you could hook onto the tree. It's actually pretty sharp. So it hooks into the bark. And you just measure around it like this. Let's say I'm the tree. And I'm just putting it around me like this. Okay. And then, so my diameter, in case you're curious, is about two feet. <laughs> two foot diameter. Okay. And then it has a wind, so you can wind it back up. Just like this. actually pretty difficult because it's so old this one just retracts itself okay a little bit easier to use i think but that's a tree diameter tape measures the circumference of a tree circumference being the area or the perimeter the distance around a circle so your tree of course is a circle all right so we're going to skip a secchi disc just because i don't have one and it's complicated to understand um clinometer is used to measure the height of a tree so uh not distance around, but the, the height. Um, clinometers are, are more so used today. I don't actually have one. What I do have is a tree scale stick. Now, if you guys were actually in class, we would always go out and do our tree measuring lab, um, our timber cruising lab, where you guys could learn to go use this. Um, so this is called a tree scale stick, AKA, also known as a Biltmore stick. I usually call it a Biltmore stick, so, but just know I'm talking about the same thing, tree scale stick or Biltmore stick. This is a ruler type device, although it's not a typical ruler, that is used to measure tree diameter and height, okay? Tree diameter and height. It's used two ways. Um, you use it horizontally, like this person here, all right, and using your dominant eye, reading that diameter of the tree. Okay, to see how what the width is. Then you turn it up horse, um, vertically like this, like this person on the left, and you measure tree height. Now, if you're cruising timber, you take the tree diameter and the tree height, and there's a chart. I actually think I gave you guys this in your notebooks. Um, it's the timber cruising lab that we won't actually get to do, but um, there's a paper in there with a chart and you use that chart to figure out tree diameter and tree height. Um, it tells you the volume of that tree. Timber cruisers use that, that information to estimate. They measure all the trees on a track of land. They calculate that up and tell you a total volume. So like you have five acres of trees. On that five acres of trees, you've got this much volume and that much volume is going to make you that much money. So that's what that whole purpose is. So tree scale stick used to measure tree diameter and height. Okay, so this is where you guys are going to need to open up your, well, I've got to stop recording. Um, actually, before I do that, I've got to stop recording because I want you guys to respond. But before I do that, I want to tell you guys, explain the assignment. So I gave you all... Where is it? I gave you guys a coloring page. A coloring page. That sounds sophisticated. Um, that's what I'm about to explain because that's the next assignment. Okay. Sorry. Here is the coloring page I gave you. Okay. You guys remember this? You still have this? Coloring page. It's a forest scene. Um, and this forest scene, can you, hopefully you guys can still see me. I think you can still see my picture. Um, this forest scene, actually, I think I have instructions for it at the end here.
Oh, dag on it. Hold on, hold on. I think I do. Stick with me. It's on 5.01, I think. All right, so this four scene is going to be used as your activity for your 5.01 and 5.04 combined. All right, so we're going to take this four scene and you're going to draw in a career and a tool. So we just talked about a lot of different careers and a few different tools. Of course, each of those tools has um, a career that kind of would use that tool. All right, so this is your four scene and, and hopefully you can use this as like a relaxing like color time. Um, stress-free assignment time, okay, as a break from your math or English or whatever you're doing, biology. Um, so here is that illustration that I gave you, that coloring page, all right? I want you to go in your notebook, which you've already done. Um, somewhere in this scene, like these instructions say, somewhere in this scene, draw in one of the careers you just learned about, okay? So you might draw a man back there, um, heart cutting down a tree, or maybe he, he just cut down that tree or that one. OK, or maybe you draw a game warden who is or a wildlife technician who is um, doing something with that bear back there. You know, maybe tagging that bear or a timber cruiser who's measuring all these trees. OK, so pick one of the careers we've learned about and you need to draw that person, that career in this scene. Not only do you need to draw the person, but you need to draw the tool that they're using to do the job. So if you draw a timber cruiser in this you also need to draw like him using a Biltmore stick. All right. So the career and the tool, I'm looking for both things. Extra credit question, just for fun. How many wildlife can you find in the picture? So there are lots of hidden wildlife um, in this coloring page. And I want to see how many you guys can identify because there's a lot hidden. So we use it as like a Where's Waldo type thing. Um, so draw the career, draw that person, draw their tool that they're using to do their job. And then how many wildlife can you find? Answer that too. Um, you can just draw it as a big number in the corner if you want to. Um, and just like with everything else, once you do that, once it's in your notebook, you can take a picture of it, email it to me, or put it in the um, upload section on Canvas that I'll have there for you. Um, but that's that's today's assignment. That's how we're wrapping up. There's no vocab quiz for 5.04. So if you didn't take the 5.01 vocab quiz, make sure you take the 5.01 vocab quiz. Um, there's not one for 5.04. All I'm asking you to do is do your coloring page. Show me in this why in this nature scene, in this environmental science scene, how that career um, would be involved. All right, so show me that. All right, I'm going to stop recording. So if you have any questions about the assignment, you can um, you can shoot them in the chat or you can you can speak them. So because I'm stopping recording.